Welcome back. All right, next up on the list is Laravel Pennant. This is a first party package, which means, yeah, it, it doesn't ship with Laravel by default. Instead, you have to install it as a package. But we call it a first party package because it is maintained by the Laravel core team. Okay, so let's have a look. I think you're gonna like it. I will begin by installing it through Composer. Composer, require, Laravel, pennant. All right, next up, let's publish the configuration files. So I can say vendor, publish. And yeah, here's all the tags for a fresh application. In our case, here's the provider and the number is five. So let's do that now. All right, so we can see that we have a new config slash pennant file as well as a new migration. Let's go ahead and run that migration. However, right now you'll see that because it's a fresh install of Laravel, we don't yet have a database to go along with it. But again, as we talked about uh, an episode or two ago, uh, in recent months, Laravel added support for automatically creating uh, this database if it does not yet exist. So let's do that now. Okay, so here we have our usual tables, but also this new features table. And yeah, this is what Laravel Pennant is. It helps you maintain and manage your various feature flags. And it was contributed by Tim McDonald, who works on the Laravel core team. Okay, so now I get it. Your next question is, well, what's a feature flag? All right, think of it like this. And I guarantee you've run into this many, many times around the web. Have you ever been in a situation where you wanted to test out uh, maybe a new style or a new layout or a new page or a new dashboard or anything like that? but you weren't yet ready to roll it out to everyone. Instead, maybe a small percentage of your faithful users can try it out. Or maybe your users can opt in to try out the new dashboard. Or maybe uh, administrators or, or people who work at your company can try out the new dashboard or the new design or layout, but everyone else still sees the old layout or the old API or, or whatever it happens to be. Have you ever found yourself in that situation? And if so, well, you're working with feature flags and this package can help you. All right, so let's have a look. I'm gonna go into PHPStorm. I'll visit my app service provider and let's define our first feature. I will say feature, Laravel pennant feature, and let's define a new one. Uh, the first argument here will be some kind of identifier that represents and describes the, uh, the feature itself. I will call ours, you know, new design, whatever format you want. Next, we'll have a closure here that will determine whether or not each individual user has access to this feature, or if the feature is active for each individual user. So if I return true here, well, yeah, that would mean everyone has access to this feature. And I don't know, I'm not sure how useful that would be. I don't know, maybe as a toggle, if you wanna say, all right, well, for the next couple of hours, let's turn on this feature for everybody but then I want an easy way to quickly turn it off. Yeah, maybe that would work, but more practically and more realistically, you will determine uh, authorization. And really that's what this is. It authorizes a, a particular feature on a per user basis. Uh, yeah, so more practically, you would say, well, these users can access the, the new dashboard or, the, or whatever the feature is, but these other users cannot access it. So again, it would be contingent on a per user basis. Okay, so maybe what we could do is type user, and then you can inspect this user to determine if the new design feature should be active for them. And yeah, maybe if you have a really small site, you can just do something like this. Like the user with an ID of one is the owner or the administrator. They can see it, but nobody else can. This would be fine. Uh, another option, maybe a little more realistically, is you have some kind of method on your user model. Uh, maybe it's is admin, is moderator, um, maybe, you know, whatever you want, whatever makes sense for your application. In this case, I'm just moving the logic here. Maybe that's all you do here uh, to define an admin for your application. Maybe you're checking a roles table. Maybe there's a column on the user, uh, the user's table that you would check, whatever you want. Either way, you can delegate like so. Return user is admin. Okay, so I think we're ready to try this out. I'm gonna go into my routes file. 
And let's see, we have, a, again, a fresh application. This loads the welcome page. All right, let's see. Um, yeah, how about this? We will say, for demonstration purposes, it's kind of lame, but it'll work. Uh, if the new design feature is activated for your account, we will load this style tag here. And that seems to inline the Tailwind library. So I guess otherwise, you get an unstyled site. Uh, so it really is a new design that you're testing out. OK, let's give it a shot. So when you pull in the pennant package, that also includes a new blade directive called feature. And you can use this just like all the blade uh, directives you're used to in the past. So we're going to give it the identifier. Ours was new design. And then don't forget to close out the block and feature. OK, so let's think about what this says. If the new design feature is activated for the current user, or for everyone, only on that condition should we uh, render the style tag that loads the Tailwind library. Otherwise, we don't. OK. And what is the logic again? Just as a reminder, the logic is if you're an administrator, you can see it. Otherwise, you don't see it. All right, let's give this a shot in the browser. So I give this a reload, and it should be unstyled. And good, I did it correctly we get a totally unstyled splash page. And this is the current design, I guess, at least for the example. OK, but now let's set an authenticated user. So here's what I'll do. I will open up Table Plus. And yeah, here's the Laravel 10 database. But you'll notice that I don't have any users at the moment. So here's what we can do. Uh, let's open up my database seeder that you'll find in Database Seeders, Database Seeder. And yeah, they have a little snippet here that I can uncomment. So when I run the db seed command, this will create 10 uh, dummy users. And that's what we need. OK, let's give that a run. PHP artisan db seed. All right. And now if I switch back to table plus and give this a refresh, yeah, now we have 10 uh, dummy users that we can work with. OK, so let's decide that Bo Sanford is the administrator. All right, if I switch back, We'll just load this in the routes file. In real life, you might have an authentication system. You might pull in Laravel Breeze, but we don't have any of that. So I will temporarily uh, define it here. I can do that by saying off, and I could say login using ID, but why don't we stick with once using ID? Uh, it does the exact same thing, but it doesn't, it doesn't set any session or cookie. So it's great for, for just little quick uh, test examples. So this means log in the user with an ID of one, but don't create a session, don't store a cookie, nothing like that. All right, so let's come back and give this another refresh, and it works. Very cool. All right, so now, with very little effort, really, we've designated that administrators can see this new design, but everyone else still sees that ugly splash page, the, the unstyled splash page. OK, very cool. But again, my next question would be, but how is this working? Well, let's have a look. If I come back to Table Plus and visit the Features table, you'll see two records here for this uh, particular feature. Notice the scope. One of them is user slash one. So of course, that's the user with an ID of one. And the value is set to true. Because for that scope, that particular user can see the feature, or the feature is active for that user. This other one, Laravel null, that would be like your global scope, uh, guest users, things like that. Uh, by default, that is set to false. OK, so that means, let's try this out. What if I log in the user with an ID of 2? Well, I want you to notice that uh, if I come back to App Service Provider, this logic here, this closure, is never triggered until you, you check the feature. So for example, I want to make this crystal clear. Uh, if I don't have any of this here, if I never check the feature using that directive, well, that means this closure will never be called. So if I come back and give it a bunch of refreshes and go to Table Plus, notice we don't end up with a new record. Because once again, you, you don't call that closure, you don't run that closure unless the feature is being checked. OK, so back to PHP Storm. Let's bring this back. And now, if I come back to Firefox and give it a refresh, uh, we are checking the feature, which means there will be a new record in the features table for that particular user. So in this case, the user with an ID of 1 has it turned on, but the user with an ID of 2, who is not an administrator, has it turned off. 
Okay, but now the next thing I wanna show you, uh, something you might run into, is what if we decide that the user with an ID of two uh, gets promoted and now they are an administrator or a moderator? So you might do something like this, this is fine. Or if you want an array, this doesn't matter. Why am I doing this? But check the ID and see if it's one or two. And those are your administrators. Okay, well now notice that in our routes file, the user with an ID of two is logged in, but they will not see the new design, even though they do qualify. All right, this is a key thing to understand. If I switch back, access for this particular user has already been saved or stored. And what this effectively means is this closure is not rerunning for every single request. It wouldn't make sense. Instead, it has already been cached in the database. So for example, if I were to delete this outright and then retry, we come back, give it a refresh, and now we recalculate it. So that means we hit this closure, we determine if the user is an administrator, now they are, and that value is then saved or cached in the database, as you see there. But yeah, otherwise, in situations like this, how might we deal with it? Well, one option is to do what I just did, manually delete it. It's fine for small stuff. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, more practically, you could, whenever a relevant uh, action takes place, you could activate the feature for the user or, or update its status. So I could say feature, activate, and then I provide the name of the feature, new design. So yeah, if the user does something, if they're upgraded as part of that, you could run code like this. Just keep in mind what this code says is activate the new design feature for the current scope. And in our case, the, the, the scope is the user. So for the current user. This does not say activate new design for everybody uh, that visits the application. It is still scoped. So in our case, notice that uh, the user with an ID of two does not have access, but when I load the home page and that user is signed in, we activate it for them alone. Okay, and actually just to make this crystal clear, let's catch this and say the user with an ID of one is false. Just to show you that we're not uh, in a blanket update uh, changing every single record. Okay, come back, give it a refresh, and now come back to table plus, you will see that switch to true. All right, very cool. So what this means is with minimal effort, you can define various features in your application. One could be a new design. One could be, how about this? How about, um, you know, once again, to call it anything you want, uh, fresh dashboard, or how about dashboard V2, whatever naming convention uh, your team comes up with. And we can say, once again, you can access version two of the dashboard if uh, the current scope, the user here meets some kind of criteria. Or what you sometimes might wanna do is say, well, I don't care which users access it. I just don't want everyone accessing this at the exact same time. Well, in those situations, you can reach for a lottery. How about one out of 10 users or one out of five users can access the new dashboard? And as always, Laravel has our back. We can pull in illuminate support lottery and let's declare our odds. I said one out of five, there you go. Add your fraction there and you're all set. Okay, so now I don't even need this scope and I think we're all set. Let's go to my routes file and let's declare a dashboard. And I'm just gonna return a string here, dashboard. But then I'm gonna have the new dashboard. So we'll have one here. All right, so now we have the old dashboard and the new one that you want to load. Okay, so here you might check if the, uh, what did we call it, dashboard v2 uh, feature is active, maybe we redirect them somewhere else. That would be fine. Redirect them to the new dashboard. Otherwise, uh, stick with the old dashboard. All right, let's give this a try. Let's visit our dashboard and we get the current dashboard. So if I come up to table plus, we should have a new record here. And sure enough, the user with an ID of two, as the odds turn out, uh, did not have access. And actually on that note, just to make this a little easier on myself, why don't we say three out of four chance, a 75% chance that we will get the new dashboard. Okay, so let's come back and uh, hopefully this won't take too long. 
and we switch our current user, give it a refresh, and there we go, it did work. Okay, so now we can see a relationship between any scope, in this case a user, and uh, all of the features associated with it. So in this case, the user with an ID of one does not have access to the new design, but they do have access to this dashboard V2. All right, so now we can see that the user with an ID of one has access to this new dashboard, but yet yeah, the user with an ID of two will not. So if we give it a try, they're still stuck with the old dashboard. But now you'll notice because we are redirecting to this new URI and there's no authorization associated with it, well, yeah, they were still able to access uh, that new dashboard. Okay, so that's another thing we should check for. And again, we can solve that problem. I will visit my HTTP kernel. And yeah, we can add a new one that's available uh, through this package. So here is our route middleware aliases. We're gonna call it uh, feature. And that will be ensure, there it is, features are active. And real quick, if we have a look there, uh, here's the middleware. Notice that you can pass in the name of the feature. Okay, cool. This is all we have to do. So now for any pages that need protection, you can use your new middleware. Middleware, feature, colon, and then the name of the feature, dashboard v2. All right, cool. So now, yeah, if I come back and refresh, we don't have access to this page, so an exception is thrown. And of course, uh, there are options to handle that exception however you want to. Okay, so there's a lot more to dig into here, but I think this will get you started. It's a really nice addition. It's very elegant. I think Tim did a great job. So uh, I encourage you to check it out.